Now we start with our breaking news story. Several police officers have been shot during a rally in Dallas, Texas, against police brutality organized by Black Lives Matter activists. For more details now, let's cross over to our correspondent, Alexei Yaroshevsky, who joins us from Washington, D.C. Alexei, thanks for joining us. What do we know so far about the Dallas shooting? Well, the latest I've heard um, from the um, chief of Dallas police at the moment is that uh, 10 police officers have, in fact, been shot by what looks like two snipers. Uh, four have been confirmed dead, three in critical condition. Uh, at least one of those police officers uh, is believed to be a transport police officer, uh, which, uh, you know, the, the, the transport police, which is um, securing transport in the city. And they were uh, more or less off duty during this protest. We also know that the shooting happened uh, in the middle of a Black Lives Matter protest in the city of Dallas. Uh, those protests have been happening all throughout uh, the evening um, on uh, Thursday all across America. I covered one in Washington, D.C., where about 3,000 people gathered. There was one in New York. But in Dallas, uh, probably the place where you least expect this kind of thing to happen, uh, the shooting take place. Uh, there's no confirmation whatsoever uh, who the people behind the shooting were, uh, although the police has just released a, a picture of a suspect. And this is, uh, this looks like a, uh, an African-American male wearing a cocky um, uh, T-shirt. Uh, it's absolutely no information whether he belongs to the Black Lives Movement or any uh, other um, any other movements at all, although we've seen um, what may be described as speculation right now on uh, one of the news outlets in the United States that uh, this attack may have been performed not by uh, members of the Black Lives Movement, uh, who have always been protesting peacefully in the streets of different American cities, but by terrorists. But definitely this is something of a speculation at this moment. The information keeps uh, updated uh, basically as we speak. Um, just 20 minutes ago, it was three dead. Now it's confirmed as four. So we, we're getting more information as the news unravel there in Dallas. Alexei, I'm sure you'll keep us updated on that story. Alexei Yaroshevsky from Washington, D.C. People are outraged after the deadly police shootings of Alton Sterling in Louisiana and Philando Castile in Minnesota. The incidents were caught on video, which shows that both victims were unarmed when they were killed. The first incident occurred on Tuesday in the city of Baton Rouge in Louisiana, where two police officers killed 37-year-old Alton Sterling in a parking lot. He was thrown on the ground and then shot in the head. Police have said that he was carrying a gun, but it was not visible in the video. The second incident came a day later and was filmed on Periscope. 32-year-old Philando Castile had been stopped in his car by a police officer. When Castile reached for his ID, the policeman fired. People are outraged after the deadly police shootings of Alton Sterling in Louisiana and Philando Castile in Minnesota. The incidents were caught on video, which shows that the victims were unarmed when they were killed. But before violence broke out in Dallas, the rallies taking place across the U.S. have been peaceful. We talked to people who came out to a march in New York City. The violence has to stop. I mean, there has to be a better way. If you feel like someone's done something wrong, you can't just approach them and just shoot people like that. Black lives have, have purpose. And when you cops just go and kill them, like kill black men like that, there's a message being sent, a message that, you know, there's freedom here, but what freedom is there? We need to end racism in our country. It's a problem that's killing too many people. We got to stop it. We got to stop it now. We're going to have kids soon. I'm 25. I do not want my son to be the next one that you guys are at a process for. God forbid, all my kids have children that are going to be this age soon it's kind of like I don't want them to fear the police my niece goes by the police and she puts her hands up I believe this is why people are out here because they feel something that needs to be expressed in the streets and this needs to be out there to challenge other people who are relatively comfortable or basically watching from the sidelines you too have an obligation to humanity what's going on that's what's going on we are speaking out for the humanity and where is your humanity when you see these kind of atrocities take place. Civil rights activist Jesse Jackson says people should refrain from violence despite the high tension. March in whatever city that you're in. Don't, don't be silent and, and, and be restless uh, and don't, don't adjust. The one thing about oppression, you must not adjust with our marching, our fighting really does matter. Because the November 8th is such a big day in all of our lives, it must be a massive voter registration drive, a massive turnout on November 8th, because we cannot allow this kind of behavior to become 
official. The courage must conquer fear. Uh, don't self-destruct. Don't self-degrade. They become violent and suicidal, so use your marching feet. People of good will and character and care, people must come together and fight this thing. And let's coexist and not co-annihilate each other.